So yes, recreate her posture for uh, for the painting. Um, yeah, kind of copy copy the model, um, and then you know at the same time uh, also uh, take the photograph. So I've, I'm using you know like a re um, remote. Um, I'm just using my headphones because I can, if I can um, attach them, I can just press the, I don't know, if it's the loudspeaker button or something, and that will make um, my camera take a photograph. So, yeah, so that's quite tricky then. Also, I realised at the same time that what that this posture is actually, for me, is really, really uncomfortable. The way where you can have to kind of like see her back in a way, at the same time she's kind of like, twisting her head to the side but so that you can see as much of her face as you can in the image you have to go kind of like twist your head around quite a lot and that is puts a lot of strain on everything um, you know it's, it's not very comfortable um, because otherwise I'll just move my back again and then that would change the posture so kind of in a way is really interesting by if you're recreating these uh, images you you suddenly become both you are trying to look through the eyes of of um the artist and at the same time you are their model so you experience the whole thing from you know from two different perspectives plus your own perspective uh, and of course it, it will never be entirely the artist's perspective or the model's perspective. It's just kind of what you perceive could have been their perspective, or suddenly you you know you just it makes you realise certain things like, yeah, for me this posture is really uncomfortable, or you know the fabrics keep slipping down. I wonder if the original shawl would have done kind of um, the same thing, um, or would I, I guess that the the painter would have kind of um, maybe drawn enough of the folds in the shawl um, right in the beginning to know what she wanted it to look like, I guess. Um, and then she could just later on just focus on, on the model's face. Uh, and then also I took about 370 photographs, all in all. Um, so then I realised that when I looked at the photographs, there were certain angles um, that weren't a hundred percent like the ones on the painting, but I still felt that they looked a lot better uh, with me as the model. So then I had to make the decision: Am I going to go um, and go ahead and? choose the ones where kind of like my head is exactly kind of like pointed in a way that we can see like half of my face as you can see um, half of the face of, of the model but it kind of if I had been the painter that wouldn't have looked right but at a slightly different angle I would have thought yes I would like to paint that so then again I had to make a decision kind of more from an artist's point of view and I was thinking what would Gerda Wegener would have done what would she have thought uh, we've got the Sun coming out again uh, yes so um, what should I do from you know from that point of view and so I decided to go with the aesthetics. Um, I decided that it's a work of art. What would the artists have gone for? And I'm sure the artists would have gone for something that looked more pleasing to the eye or something that she would have wanted to paint. Uh, so yes, so um, that was a really interesting thing to do as well um, because first of all I would have said no 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 absolutely I want you know I want my face to look you know to be turned exactly the way the model has turned her face 
Um, but when I looked at it, it just it just didn't look right. It just didn't look like something I would have wanted to paint um, as a painter. So uh, yeah, so it's when you then decide to change it slightly. It's still the same idea. It's still capturing the original painting, um, but. Um, keeping the aesthetics of the original painting, if that makes sense. So all of that was just kind of like a really interesting journey to do. And of course, because I, I, I want to um, get the first picture out before, obviously before the end of January, because I have to have like the January picture out by January. Uh, I, I didn't have, I just had like half a day to uh, get the props and obviously also with getting the props you know I had to try and remember where did I put the fabric where did I put the uh, the the vest I wanted to use everything had to be ironed um, I had to think of where to where to put up the background and to take the photograph in front of then I had to consider the lights um, you know to do it at a time of day where it would have enough light um, move all the furniture out of the corner um, so I could put up the camera and um, so there are lots of things to consider and, um, and then also the editing um, and so because even though it's a photograph I would I wanted the uh, colors and kind of the feel to be very much like the um, painting so I had to use a photo editing software. I'm usually, for most of my photography, um, kind of it's enough to just use kind of a mix of what's on my phone and I've got the old, I think it was Google Picasa um, software plus the Google online software which does kind of enough for most of the things um, I do. Um, but in this case I felt I needed more. So I've got GIMP, I don't have Photoshop, I've got GIMP on my computer, I've experimented a little bit with it but I also thought this would be a perfect way uh, or perfect time to learn more about using GIMP and just give it, yeah because the whole image needed kind of a little bit of a retro colouring to it just because of obviously how the paper and the colours would have faded with time and try and get the colours right as much as possible um, to try and maybe hopefully change the colour of the shawl a little bit to make it more like the one in the um, in the original painting. The idea was, as I've said, to try and use GIMP for the photo editing and I started looking at, um, I've downloaded the latest version of GIMP, um, I went to several YouTube videos um, to try and kind of find the things I was looking for. There was definitely, I would have liked the shawl to get kind of a slightly darker colour even though it has like a hint of blue. I found that the shawl I was wearing and also when I had to adjust the contrast in the image, the blue seemed to be, and also with the light and the reflection of the light, the blue seemed to be um, a lot stronger. So I would have liked to change that a little bit to make it a bit duller. But I have to admit that um, the software defeated me on that day. And it could be that my computer um, is not new so it's it's um you know it's almost i don't know six years old and it wasn't like the latest version anyway uh, and the graphics card is kind of like struggling anyway whenever i um edit any of my videos so i suspect that it could actually be uh kind of my computer not really being able to work that well with the software and the memory it has um, so, and also I felt, or I, I realised that I have to spend a lot more time with just experimenting with GIMP where I don't have any time constraints. Um, 
because obviously we've got kind of the middle while I'm filming this it's, it's the middle of January and um, this first image was supposed to be kind of like the introduction and then I still have to work on the actual January um, picture which I've already you know I've already started on it but I want to get this out as quickly as possible so that I've got that out and then I can totally focus on January and um, I've, I've found something I can hopefully use for February so I need to get started on that because ideally I would like to be at least a month ahead um, so I've got more time um, to edit, to do all the vlogging, to um, yes, not to get to experiment more and not to feel that I don't want to get stressed out about it. Uh, I want to be able to do it every month, but not get stressed, get stressed out about it. So I found that very important. So anyway, what I did instead, what I always do, um, I used. A combination of, um, as I said, Picasa, um, Google Online, photo editing software, um, then I also used Photo Sketcher, which is a really fabulous another freeware uh, where you can alter um, pictures, you can kind of like change a photograph into a pencil sketch. So I've, I've been using little bits of, of that. Um, and then also possibly, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on that, it looks like I can use a filter on, um, on Canva, um, and Canva is another free online um, editing, well it's not really oh, kind of an editing software but it's more for uh, creating um, like uh, social media posts, or designing, uh, you know, posters and uh, cards, and you could do book covers and all sorts of things that I can't think. Oh, uh, a lot of YouTube um, covers, uh, Instagram posts. Pin you can do stuff for Pinterest. So I use, I use that a lot and I'm really happy with it and they've got a selection of filters as well and one of the filters seems to be working quite well to give the photograph uh, this kind of this vintage style kind of like brownish colour on top. Um, another thing I have tried and I still might do that to give it that aged look that the painting has due to its age obviously was print the image that was just a test print on coffee dyed paper and that actually looked really nice but then I realized that I would the original image would have to have a little bit more contrast um, so that you can still see all the features on the coffee dyed paper so I've still got some experimenting to do and once I know what I've done, um, once I, I've finished the image, I'm going to give you an update on how I worked it out. I, I know I could have, I might do that at a later stage at one of, with one of the other images, kind of um, show you my process of when I'm editing and I'm sure I'm going to do that. But at the moment, it's kind of a lot of trial and error. But maybe you could just go through a trial and error one. Um, I might do that with a with a January one. Well, f I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Well, we'll we'll get there. Um, because I tend to kind of like do something with one software, then upload it. Uh, or let's say because I've got my photographs on. Google Photos, so usually the first thing I do is do a quick edit on a Google Photos with that software, then I download it, then I'm using Picasa, then um, I might either upload it to Canva to see if any of the filters work, or I might use, uh, what I've also done is kind of use Photo Sketcher first to get um, to get kind of like additional 
shadings and contrast and then take it to Picasa to for example for the for the next one to do a uh, kind of like a sepia color but I had to do the photo sketcher thing first so that the sepia would work properly and I had to try out different methods of what to do first and kind of like all the layers which is in a way how you would use GIMP or Photoshop but I have to kind of like use different softwares to um, to do the same thing and it seems to work it's looking okay so for now I'll probably just have to carry on with that but I'll at some point I'll kind of show you at least parts of the um, of the editing or um, yeah that, that I'm doing because I thought that might be quite interesting as well to see kind of like the raw photograph and then see what I'm, I'm doing with it so I'll definitely do that Okay, so it's it's done. The um, image is finished, and um, I have to say I love the whole process. It was absolutely fantastic. I had to be really careful not to go back to uh, edit more and more and more and more. Uh, and at some point, I just had to say, just just stop and be happy with the result. So, um, as I said before, I went kind of like back and forth between all the different um, software I was using and in the end I added uh, the filter I found on Canva, I think it's called Whimsical, that gave it this kind of this um, vintage vibe that turned the colours a bit more uh, like they are on um, the original painting. So okay, big reveal. Um, I have to say, I'm, 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 I personally am really happy with the result and what I've managed to do in really in this short period of time. And I, yeah. So I'll, I'll just show it to you now, shall I? Okay. So here we go. I've got them um, side by side. Uh, obviously, the original and what uh, kind of like my take on it. And I've. Feel, yeah, I personally feel that I have been able to capture the original image in a way that I am happy with. Obviously, there are a few things that are different. You could have said the fan should have been a bit higher, and also, you know, if I could have been able to adjust the color of the shawl more. But kind of like what I had available, um, and yeah, like, you know, GIMP, GIMP not wanting to work for me, me not knowing enough about it to be able to use it quickly enough to edit this photograph. Uh, I'm actually quite proud of myself for you know working a way around it. To be honest, and. Um, kind of in a way I really enjoyed the, the process so anyway so here we are I'm also going to uh, both of both of the images are going to be posted on uh, Instagram no actually by the time I've um, uploaded and published this video they will have been um, posted on Instagram so if you wanted to have a closer look they are both there so yes this is my introductory image and uh, yeah and it's almost the end of January and it's it's all just because uh, I yeah I had the idea as I said over the Christmas period so that didn't really help but anyway I've got I've got my January the actual January photograph I've, I've got that sorted as I said it's going to be a photograph um, that is done I need to uh, do a bit more filming to finish the vlog and then edit that video so um, most of it is going to be the yeah kind of like the editing part of the, of the actual video that is going to take up more time but I really want to have them both out so by the time I kind of post the image on Instagram I want to be able to have the vlog ready on YouTube so that they both go up at the same time. I've also got, uh, really excited, I've also got February sorted. I've got um, something 
that I'm yeah super excited about is something different again um, yeah so I've got that I've started working on that because you know February is around the corner and it, I really would like to be able to fingers crossed at least uh, publish that one in the middle of February rather than you know at the end of the month um, and I've got a few images to choose from for then for March there's one I would really like to do but I think I might leave that until a bit later because also I want to they the I kind of want to keep a variety going over the month so I, I'm trying not to have like two photographs uh, in in a row or two uh, paintings in a row or paintings in a row or let's say kind of different types of paintings I want to kind of like mix it up a little bit so I might do that in the summer but I'm super excited about that one as well so yes yeah, so anyway um, thank you very much for watching if you've been following me on this vlog I hope you found it interesting um, and, and not too long I have to I have to work on this kind of this whole vlogging while I'm creating something is obviously new and I have to see if I have to do them in stages or leave them as one video or have them as snippets throughout the month I, I don't know yet so I, I just have to work um, on it so anyway I hope you enjoyed it I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, my recreation of the uh, model with Fan and Shawl by Gerda Wegener and uh, yeah so Let's see what the January picture is going to be like.